Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing fantastic. So today's video, as you can tell from the title, is going to be the first episode of my Grace series. And guys, I have never been so excited to film a video for you guys. Honestly, you guys know me. I love to play. I love to have fun. I love to dress up, do girly things. But this is my heart. Do you know what I mean? All things pertaining to Christ. A whole series where we can just discuss topics, have Q and A's. People will be coming onto my channel. Hopefully, when Corona passes and we'll just be just growing in the word together growing in the knowledge of god and just 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 a nice space a nice bubble that i'm creating and i hope you guys really enjoy this video and yeah be sure to like comment and subscribe and let's just get straight into it the most frequent question that i always get from you guys on snapchat and instagram is how to increase in faith how do i grow in my faith i feel like i'm decreasing in my faith what can i do so i thought best thing for me to do is literally start off the series talking about faith what it is and how to then grow in it so i'm going to be explaining it biblically diving into that a bit and then we'll go into like the three ways in which you can grow in faith i'm going to be mentioning a lot of key scriptures so you might want to jot them down or maybe pause the video to read them so you can follow what i'm saying and yeah obviously i just pray that everything i say is led by the spirit that he leads me in all truth and that i speak the word of god accurately and that his name is glorified through this video and that at least one of your hearts is edified at least one of you learned something so the biblical definition of faith can be taken from hebrews 11 verse 1 and it literally says faith is the substance of things hoped for it is the evidence of things that we cannot see when you read that it's like okay i, ha I hear you i hear you but what does that really mean the so faith is believing and living up that everything jesus brackets the word says is true faith is based upon christ being the substance for which we then hope and live upon. He begins our faith and he perfects it. He begins our faith and he perfects it. Faith is the utmost trust in God. Faith is trust in his word, trust in his power, trust in his sovereignty. Faith is opposite to fear. So while fear can bring defeat, it can bring stagnancy, dormancy and suppression, faith brings growth, it brings life, it brings triumph, it brings expression and activity. So faith goes beyond simple belief. It is active. That's why the Bible talks many a times about the journey of faith, the walk of faith, the life of faith, because it's, it's, it's a thing. It's all Almost, it's not just like a label it's an actual verb like it's an active thing so to further explain it I divided it into three parts so this is just to make it simpler for you guys and for myself as well so we have the gift of faith we have the journey of faith and we have the result of faith and these three things all encompass faith so the gift of faith faith is a gift from God Ephesians 2 8 puts it perfectly it says for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and it is not from yourself it is a gift from God so period we receive the gift of faith when we're called by God to accept Jesus as our Lord and our personal Savior when we truly believe that he is the Son of God who came down from heaven lived as a man bore the sins of the world died for us paying the penalty of our sins then defeating death and rising on the third day that is the gift of faith to believe that you believe it by faith do you understand galatians 3 26 says for you are all children of god through faith in christ jesus and we know we are made right only by faith in christ not by anything else to further emphasize my point romans 3 30 says there is only one god and he makes people right with them only by faith so it's only by faith and this faith being discussed is a christian's first act of faith it is only by the spirit that this can even be done as is mentioned in first corinthians 12 verse 3 which says it's only by the spirit can someone say jesus is lord so for you to even wake up in bed and just say yeah jesus is lord i believe that oh he is the son of god that's faith that's by faith and we know it's a gift and it is by the holy spirit because faith is a gift of the spirit and it is amongst the fruit of the spirit and this can be seen in galatians 5 20 and first corinthians 12 9 1 Corinthians 12 9 talks about the, the gifts of the Spirit and in Galatians 5 20 talks about the fruit of the Spirit and they both mention faith. So the gift of faith that I'm talking about here, this part of it where we accept or we believe, this is the initiation of our faith and this is mentioned in Hebrews 12 2 which talks about Christ being the initiator and the perfecter or the author and the finisher of our faith. So our faith is based upon him, it is rooted in him, he is the substance for which we hope for and he initiates our faith. 
so the next part of faith i would describe is the journey of faith and as christians our life is a walk of faith it is a journey of faith if we look at habakkuk 2 verse 4 i'm going to read what it says it said and this was god speaking to habakkuk he was saying look at the people they trust in themselves their lives are crooked but the righteous will live by their faith to god it's showing us that faith is a lifestyle, constant trust and constant reliance on God and his word. In addition to this, in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, Paul is talking about the future glory that we will share in Christ. And the NKJV version says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. So that's also letting us know that faith is a walk. Other translations will even say live by faith and not by sight. So those two are interchangeable. And we, so we see that faith is active and it causes us to move. For example, the Israelites in Exodus 14, they couldn't just see the water and just believe and have faith that they're gonna get past it no they had to walk into the ocean do you know what i mean let's even think about even if god parted the sea which he did they still had to walk down in you know a sea is not just they had to walk down into the depths of the sea walking by faith actively trusting in that as they go god is going to see them through and a perfect example of the walk of faith can be seen in galatians 2 20 one of my favorite scriptures and it reads my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I, but Christ who lives in me. So I live in this earthly body. I live in this earthly body, trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So it's the living and the trusting, and that is the act of faith in Christ. So the last part of faith I'll be describing is the result of faith. And as Christians, yes, we know that we are made right only by our faith in Christ, not by our works. But one mistake I used to make back in the day, and I'm sure some people can make it because it's like, you know what I mean, sometimes it's lack of understanding, is not realising that indeed we're not made right by our works, but our faith will always bear works. It will always bear works. They go hand in hand. We will always bear fruit. We will always bear a result. And how is this so? Just going back to the previous definitions that I was saying, it's active because it causes expression because there's a result. If I'm living and trusting in the word of God, then how I live my life is going to be then shaped by the word of God. And that is the result of my faith. And James 2.14, another one of my favourite scriptures, puts it perfectly. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone in hand you can't say you have faith but you don't show it by your lifestyle by the fruits you bear by your character and by everything that comes forth from you and even verse 22 of james 2 goes to say that our actions make our faith complete and then verse 26 says faith without good deeds is dead it literally i'm sure it even says in there that it's like a body that is not breathing now we're going to be talking about how to grow in faith because i feel like this is the biggest question that i get and growing in faith it basically encompasses growing spiritually and as Christians I believe we're all trying to grow spiritually daily we're all trying to be filled with more and more of the spirit daily do you know what I mean we're never going to get to that point where we're completely perfect but we are striving for that perfection the process of sanctification to be seen in our lives daily and in Romans 14 1 it talks about the dangers of criticism and it lets us know that someone can be weak in faith they can be low in faith do you know what I mean and if you can be low in faith then you can be strong in faith and if you can be strong in faith then you can grow in faith there may be other ways but I'm just going to focus and hone in on these three so the first one is remaining in the word and I believe this is the biggest one this is for, this is for us this is not just for you guys this is for me as well literally remaining in the word Romans 10 and 17 puts it simple faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word so i want us to really hold on to that romans 10 17 faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word so if we look at john chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 i'm going to read what it says it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god all things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made in scripture like point blank period the word is always personified as christ jesus is the word of god literally listen in the beginning was the word jesus and the word was with god jesus and the word was god jesus all things were made through him jesus and without him nothing was made that was made john 5 39 tells us that all scripture points to christ and that is a fact old testament new testament if you're reading it and you're seeing it you will see christ in every scripture in the bible 
and Hebrews 1 verse 1 to 2 mentions that in previous times God used to speak to us through the prophets but now he speaks to us through his son Jesus the son of God the word of God going back to John 1 1 do you know what I mean and then also linking this to Hebrews 12 verse 1 to 2 Christ the initiator some other versions will say the author the finisher of our faith the word are you guys really getting the picture that i'm painting i hope you're getting it and i'm i'm sorry if you feel like i'm just throwing bare scripture literally the best way for me to explain the word is with the word hebrews 11 that whole book i believe the title was like great patriarchs of faith the whole book is about great examples of faith you read these things and it stirs up your faith guys it literally can read about genesis abraham how he was willing to sacrifice the son that god had blessed him with you can read about joseph how he was almost at the point of death now becoming governor of egypt because he trusted in the lord he didn't look to his circumstances he was faithful do you know what i mean you can read about noah who was building this huge ark in the middle of no rain people were looking at him like he was crazy do you know what i mean there's so many great examples of faith that we can read and it can inspire our own faith because it's like wow if these people could trust in god despite their adversities why can i not have you not realized that anytime you're dwindling spiritually the first thing that has gone is your word this used to be the case for me like a week could go by i haven't read my word i'm feeling unfulfilled i'm feeling empty i'm feeling tired spiritually drained feeling just low that's how powerful the word is our faith comes by the word so if we take away the word then what's going to happen to our faith our whole lives as christians is based upon faith and it is based upon the bible the word of god the word of god the word of jesus the word i want to draw a parallel between the old testament and the new testament just to really emphasize and stress how important it is for us to be in our word daily if we want to grow in faith in exodus 16 19 god is feeding the israelites in the wilderness with the bread the manna from heaven and he tells them to gather enough for the day and to not save any for the next morning and if we look at john jesus refers to himself as the true bread of heaven the one who has come down yeah when some of the israelites would keep the manna the next morning it will be filled with maggots. What I'm just trying to stress is that yesterday's Bible study is not enough to sustain us through today. It doesn't matter if you read the Bible for nine hours or you read it for five minutes. We need to constantly fill ourselves with the word daily. God had fresh bread for them every morning. He told them he didn't need to gather bread for the next day because he had something new for them in the morning. And I see it as the same way God has a new word for us in his scripture daily so it's just for us to tap in and receive it this bread that they were receiving the manna that was going to nourish their body in the same way the word the scripture it nourishes us spiritually and it fills us up psalm 119 verse 105 i believe mentioned that the word is a lamp to our feet so when we're in the word it becomes our directory we are able to walk by faith as christians the word is so crucial we need to be taking it in if we want to really grow in faith so the next way i'll be discussing to increase in faith is by having the right thinking and this pertains more to like faith during hard times but it can also even just be faith during like everyday life so if we read romans 12 verse 2 it says do not copy the custom of this world but let god transform you by changing the way you think and this renewal of the mind is done where in the word of god so that even just goes back to the first point but we're talking about the right thinking here when we talk about faith we could talk about fear because fear is the opposite of faith when we start setting our minds on our situations and our circumstances fear can creep in but when we set our mind on god when we set our mind on his sovereignty and his power our faith is stirred up we we, we, we find the strength to trust in him and just have faith in him regardless of what things may look like second timothy 1 7 reads i have not given you the spirit of fear but power love and a sound mind and even just linking this to everything that is going on currently guys if we are looking at the current situation covid 19 everything we will be fearful why will we not be fearful we're we not human do we not have eyes can we not see but well, that's not what we're called to do we're called to look to christ the initiator and the perfecter of our faith honestly guys i tell you with no lie i'm not scared do you know what i mean to live is christ and to die is gain so obviously god really we live and we, like this thing passes but at the end of the day like there's bigger things you know there's bigger things this is not our life our life is somewhere else you know what i mean so what i'm just trying to say is focusing on god will bring an increase in faith a perfect example of this is psalm 77 and this is a psalm by asaph and in 
verse 1 to 11 he's lamenting he's crying out to God he's in distress he's looking to his circumstances he's asking God have you turned your face from me like what's going on da, 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 da. but then verse 11 he switches his focus he remembers the goodness of God the great things God had done for him in the past he was able to come to a place of worship even though literally maybe in that moment his circumstance hadn't actually changed but his perspective had changed you know what I mean it's just like Peter when he was on the water when he started to look to water he started sinking we have to keep our eyes on Christ and his sovereignty and just understand that listen if we love him all things are gonna work for our good if someone is to come to me today and say I or how can I grow in faith I'm just gonna tell you read the word Faith comes by hearing, hearing through the word. Do you know what I mean? Because then the word transforms the way you think. Romans 12 verse 2. Do you get it? It's all like a big thing together. So the last practical way that I'll be talking about on how to increase our faith is to surround ourselves with people of faith. And this is more of like a secondary one because this is like, it's an outward influence opposed to like an inward influence of the word, but it still is able to come from the outside and influence us inward positively. Scripture lets us know that our faith is not just for ourselves. Literally our faith, our trials, our tribulations, our suffering, everything that we go through pertaining to Christ is not just for ourselves, but it's for the benefit of all. Benefit of all, the church, the family, the body of Christ. Do you know what I mean? And likewise, surrounding ourselves with people who are strong in the faith, mentors, friends, family, it can also stir up our faith even more so. The perfect example of this is seen in Mark 2 and this is where Jesus heals the paralyzed man and what is so crazy is that it's lit he's paralyzed so he can't walk to Jesus it's the faith of his friends allows them to even carry him to Jesus for him to receive his healing and when they carry him to Jesus Jesus acknowledges the faith of his friends and then he receives spiritual healing and physical healing so yeah, we can see that as a perfect example of how the faith of others around us can even help us, can even bring us to a place of greater faith, to spiritual growth, to spiritual healing and all these sort of things. And I just want to stress the same way was the faith of the friends that allowed the man to be carried to the feet of Jesus where he could receive his spiritual healing, his spiritual growth and all sort of things. Is the same way if we're not careful and we then choose to surround ourselves with people who are not of faith, people who are maybe more even of strong faith, that can then affect our faith. So guys, as you'd go to a doctor, you'd tell him you're feeling tired and he'd ask you, what have you been eating? Literally, anytime you're feeling spiritually weak, ask yourself, what have you been eating pertaining to the word and spiritual nourishment? So yeah, those are literally the three practical ways that I wanted to share with you guys and how you can grow in your faith. So it's to stay in the word, it's to change the way you think by the word and it is to surround yourselves with people of strong faith. So guys, I have some prayer points that I wanna leave with you guys that you guys can take into your closet, into your private room, ponder on, and God willingly, as we pray, he will answer us as it says in Psalm 34. So the first one is a prayer for an increase in faith. The second one is a prayer for daily hunger for the word. The third one is prayer for spiritual obedience to meditate on the word day and night. The fourth one is a prayer that God will transform us into a new person by changing the way we think. The fifth one is that the word will become alive and bear fruit in our lives. And the sixth one is a prayer that we will be rooted and established in his word. So guys, that is literally it for episode one of the Grace series. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was clear and it was concise. Please comment down below, like my channel, Stay tuned because you know we got all the videos coming, quarantine content. And yeah, just stay blessed. And I hope you really enjoyed it. And yeah, that's it for me today. Until next time.